After drying, we will be having this dry concrete. Then I measure. Now I have 15 sides. I have 15 sides and another 15. Then I record my, my measurement in a, a recording sheet. I have 15 times 15 times 15 as it is a cubic. And I check if the same, the same has the same dimension. All of my sample has the same dimension. And from here, I will need the cross-section. The cross-section area, it will be found by side times side, because it is the square where the road will be applied, it is the square. So I have to calculate the area where I take 150 times 150. Then I get 22,500. From that time, I can get even the volume. The volume, it will be measured in a meter cubic. So I take 0 0.15 times 0 0.15 times 0 0.15. Then I get the value. Uh, now I have to indicate even the ID of my sample. I put sample number one. Sample number two, sample number three. Casting that, uh, it will be because today, the test, date of test, it is today. Today it is 18. 18 June 2020, and the same date and the same sample. A casting time, it was, at, at this time, it was uh, 2.25. And the date was on 16 uh, May, when it was casted. Then, Days, it is 28. So, we have sample ID, we have casting date, we have casting time, we have date of test, we have age, we have dimension, we have cross-section. So now we are going to determine the mass or the weight in a kilogram so that we can get the density, and after, we will proceed by compressing our sample. So by using the balance, we take sample number one, we put it on the balance, then we get 7.599.5 kg. For so sample number one, we have in the kg, we have 7.7995. 7 then take back our sample. The same procedure, we take sample number two, we put it here, then we get 7955. Five. Seven point nine five five. Then we continue with the sample number three. Sample number three. Then we get eight 
8.086. So from this weight, and you have the volume, we can calculate the density, which is equal to weight over volume. From there, we can get all densities. So now we have different parameters in our report. Then we are going to proceed with compression. Now we are coming at the compressive strength so that we can get the load. By that load, we can divide by it, that area we got there. Compression testing machine, it has the capacity 2,000 kN. So it has a switch for the power and it has the switch for action or compression. So from there, we will take our sample number one. This is S1. We put it in the machine. This test, it must be done axial. So I press it at the center of the machine. Then I close the door for my safety and the safety of my colleague so that no one can be damaged with the sample. Then I proceed with switching on the machine. Then I switching on the process. Then I load. Then from that, I run the machine. Now the sample is testing. From this readout, I will get the increasing in load. The machine is just starting compressing. You can see, when the machine reach the maximum or the failure load, it will stop itself. It is digital, not mechanical. So we will record the load after just the concrete, our concrete is fed. Okay, our process is over now. So from that we unload, then we stop the machine. After that, we record the load in the kilo newton. 750.5 kN. Then we open and we remove our sample from the machine. We put it aside. Then we take the second sample, S2. We place it in the machine the same way. We close for the safety. We load the machine. We run it. Then we start the test. We wait for the fail. We don't push. We don't rush. Just because the machine itself it is testing. OK, now we get the value. Then we stop the machine. Uh, it is 761.1. Uh, then we test for the third sample. And the final one, S3. Then we put in the center. We cross. We run the machine, forgetting the failed road. So now the test is over. 
for the third, third piece, I'll code the value of 766.0. Then, but before reporting, I have to remove the third sample. Then, I clean the machine for proper use. Then I proceed with the report. So here I have the, fi the fail load. I have to calculate the compressive strength as required. So the fail load is in kilonewton. And the compressive strength is just calculated in newton over millimeter squared. From there, I have to change this kilonewton into kilonewton. I will multiply by 1,000 so that I can get newton. And from that load, I can get the compressive strength. So, for getting the compressive strength, I will take this, this fail load, then I, I divide with this cross-section area here. So, for sample number one, equal to load over its area. Here I get 33. Point four. For sample number two, I take its load, divide by the area, then I get 33.8. Sample number three, I take its load, divide by its area, equal to 34.0. From here, I have three samples. I have to make the average. By making the average is equal to the value of sample number one plus value of sample number two plus value of sample number three uh, divide by three. Then I get the average compressive strength of 33.7. From there, if you have the average compressive strength, you have to judge. There is a requirement. From there, the minimum, from the standard you are using, the minimum should be 30. 30 newton per mm squared. So, because we got 33.3, Compared to 30, here the remark is passed. And sample number two, the required is 30, the same value. So we have 33.8. Here we have pass. And sample number three, the required is 30 as the minimum value. Then here we have 34 then pass. So, as a conclusion, after making the compression test of our concrete, and according to the standard, and the requirement of 30 megapascal as the minimum value, all concrete tubes have passed. So, from there, our compression test is reported and the remark is that the compression test value is above 30 megapascal. So 
Why do you actually test the concrete at one day, at seven days, at different intervals? Because there is different percentage of just increasing in strength according to the, to the time or age or day. For one day, we have 16% of its maximum. You can compress the concrete for one day. You can get the prediction after 28 days. Because if you consider 16% of the total value, you can get how much you will be having after 28 days. Then after three days, we will be having 40%. Seven days, we will be having 65. 14 days, we will be having 90%. Then for 21, we have 90, 94%. For 28 days, we will be having 99%. So the concrete at the maximum level is at 28 days with 99%. So we have different grades, grades or class of concrete by the different values expected. For example, for M10, M10 for three days, we will be needing 16%, which equal to 4%, 4 megapascals. And for example, our class, which we will be dealing uh, about one day, the requirement is 12. And the seven days, it is 19.5. And for 14 days, it is 27. And for 28 days, it is 30. So according to the requirement and according to the test that we performed, our test of concrete has already passed. So I thank you for attending this course. So this test is useful and is practicable and it is critical for the construction work. Thank you.